Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have the same problem that we had in the previous video, but now we're actually going to try and factor this polynomial, a polynomial of five terms. We're used to solving polynomials of three terms, so how do you solve polynomials of five terms? Well, that means that you probably will not end up with two binomials multiplied together. One of the terms is going to, going to have to be a trinomial. So, with other words, we're going to multiply something that has two terms times something which has three terms. So we need one, two terms, one, two, three terms. All right, so that's a good start. Next, we take a look at the very first term. We'll see an a squared there, which means we need an a here, and we'll need an a there because a times a gives me an a squared. All right, then I see a b a minus 6b squared, which means I'm going to need a b here and I'm going to need a b here as well. Notice I have not yet plugged in any of the, of the coefficients and I've not plugged in any of the signs. But so far, I have a times a that gives me a squared, so these are complete. I have a b times b to give me a b squared, but now I need a negative 6, which means I either need a 2 and a 3, or a 3 and a 2. Notice I don't know if it's 2, 3, or 3, 2, and I don't know which ones are positive or negative. Notice that it's a negative 6b squared, so one of them has to be negative, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. Then I look at the final term, 9b, which means I need a constant here in such a way that when I multiply times this, I get a 9b. So I need some sort of constant here, and notice I also, when I multiply it times the a, I need a 3a. That means I'm going to need a 3 there. And now I need a 9b. That means 3 times this will give me a 9. That means I need a 3 there, which means I'm going to end up with a 2 over there. So, did we follow that? Let's try that again. We're going to get rid of this. We'll go through it one more time. So, a times a gives me a squared. b times b gives me b squared. However, I need a 6b b squared. So I need a 2 or a 3, and a 3 or a 2. So if this is a 2, that's a 3. If this is a 3, that's a 2, because 3 times 2 will give me the 6. I don't care about the sign yet. Then I need something here, in such a way that I multiply this times this, I get a 9b. And if I multiply this times this, I get a 3a. Again, I don't care about the sign. The only option is that since this is a 1a, I must have a 3 there, because 3 times a gives me a 3a, and that means that this times this will give me a 9b, which means that it has to be a 3, not a 2. That means this must be a 2 and not a 3. There we go. Now we probably have, have all the correct coefficients. Let's check. There's one more coefficient we haven't checked yet, which is the ab over there. So, if I multiply this times this, I get a 3ab. If I multiply this times this, I get a 2ab. But I get a negative ab. That means that if this is a positive 2ab, and this gives me a negative 3ab, if I sum them together, I get a negative 1ab. That means that this must be negative, and that must be positive. And finally, this times this should give me a positive 9b. That means that this must also be negative because negative times negative gives me a positive. That should be the factored form. Now notice on the last go around in the previous video, this was the correct answer. And it looks like that's exactly what we got. We did get the correct answer. But just to be sure, let's multiply it all out to make sure it reduces back to what we have over here. So a times a gives me a squared. A times plus 2b gives me plus 2b, or I should write a first, plus 2ab. This times this gives me a minus 3a. This times this gives me a minus 3ab. This times this gives me a minus 6b squared. And this times this gives me a plus 9b. Then I realize that I have a plus 2ab and a minus 3ab, which combine, so I end up with a squared minus ab, minus 3a, minus 6b squared, and plus 9b. And this should be the same as what I have over there. a squared minus ab, minus 3a, minus 6b squared, plus 9b. And that is correct. So I verified 
that I got the correct answer and ensure I got the same answers I did in the previous video when I used the quick shortcut method to find the right answer. And that is how it's done. Sure did. <laughs> You know, it's, it's not really trial and error. It's, it's kind of, um, it's almost like the um, foil, method. foil method in a way. <laughs> it's not my preferred method, but it does kind of work nicely here. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, you look at all the possibilities, you look what you need to obtain. And so you first get the letters then you get the numbers, and then you get the signs. And if you go that process, you end up getting to it pretty quick. Really, I thought it was relaxed. <laughs> what if it gets complicated when everything else, everything has a, um, a coefficient in front of it, in front of the a squared and the ab? It gets really complicated really quickly. You're correct. So if you have a situation where you have another coefficient in here, that would be the only additional coefficient, right? Everything else has a coefficient, but you get another number there. Oh, why does AB doesn't have a coefficient? Well, it's one. It's a combination of two terms. So, it, it, so the only other thing you would have is a, like a number here. And then you have to play around with this first. So you have all the, co the possibilities, and for each that possibility, so that the number of possibilities will increase very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we, I'm sure we can devise a more systematic method in case of the really complicated problems, but that's not what we're after here. Here we're after <laughs> quickly getting to the answer when you're dealing with a test like this.